Today on the channel, we take a trip to Texas. Beautiful this time of year with Power Town Series 1 Ultras, Stan the Lariat Hansen. Welcome everyone, Kyle here, and welcome back to the channel for another Power Town Series 1 Ultras unboxing and review. And today, we got the wild man from Texas. We've got Stan the Lariat Hansen from Series 1. But for all your other wrestling figure needs, make sure you're hitting up Ringside Collectibles. Use discount code KYLE. Save yourself 10%. So much new stuff coming into Ringside. Can't wait for this new dog collar match. Two packs should be here any day. Stay tuned for that review. But of course, we're going to do this review like we do all the other reviews on the channel. We're going to take a look at the packaging. We're going to talk about it. We're going to unbox it. We're going to talk about it. We're going to see where it goes from there. And Stan Hansen, a guy that's been around forever, but a stranger to action figures for the most part. We had some Japanese figures back in the day. But basically, that's it. He never got an LJN, never got a Hasbro, never got a Mattel Elite, never got a Jazzwares figure, because he was never really in any of those divisions ever. He was in WCW for a short time frame. I want to say 1990, what is time? I was a very little kid at the time, but I absolutely loved Stan Hansen. I loved his feud with Lex Luger. I'll never forget him dropping all of his chewing tobacco all over Lex Luger back in the day. Some of those hard-hitting matches. And, of course, a lot of people do remember him from his uh, starring role. Sure, why not? In uh, No Holds Barred, of course. So that's where Stan Hansen for the American audience pretty much is, outside of the territory system, a little AWA. But during the height of things, man, he was over in Japan uh, wrecking people's heads with those lariats and stuff. And, of course, being a tag team partner with Bruiser Brody, who was also in this set and also has the same tag team title belt. So very interesting one, but one I am very happy to get. I love Stan Hansen. Very happy to finally get an action figure of him after so many years of waiting. And of course, we're going to do this review like we do all the other reviews on the channel. We're going to take a look at the packaging. We're going to talk about it. We're going to unbox it. We're going to talk about it. We're going to see where it goes from there. So without further ado, there's the old Stan the Lariat Hansen Power Town Series 1. Looking only like he could look if he was an action figure with a big picture of him on the front. But you get that PWF title, isn't it? PWF, yeah. PWF World Tag Team Championship belt included. Same one we got with Brody, of course. Stan Hansen Power Town window box. Love the window box. The power of magnets. They compel you. Get the big window there, and then we get War and Peace, which you guys know I love. I love a blurb. Give me the big blurb. I would prefer it to be on the back of the package. Uh, maybe they can work that into Series 2. Maybe do a little packaging redesign, things like that. But it does say, for almost 30 years, Stan Hansen was one of professional wrestling's roughest and toughest talents, wielding his signature lariat and cowbell, adorned with his cowboy hat, leather vest, and chaps. Hansen was a force inside the ring. Six foot four, 321 pounds, stiff clothesline. Of course, he broke Bruno San Martino's neck. That was a famous thing back in the day, of course. Uh, it talks about his Japan time, all that. You can pause the video if you want to read the whole thing. I would love to read it all, but I don't know if you guys want me to read read that to you as a good night uh, reading event. But very cool looking figure in here. I like what I see. On the back, premium collectible, Stan Hansen, Power Town. Right there, and then he is number five in Series 1. Very VHS book-like uh, packaging. I do love that, of course. Cross-sell down below, playing all the hits. We're unboxing all these here on the channel. Make sure you do subscribe. And then at the end, once we get Kerry Von Erich, hopefully in a couple of weeks, we're going to rank the entire wave from my least favorite to my favorite, so stay tuned for that. Glamour shots up there at the top. Without further ado, let's see what's going on. Let's get the old Lariat himself out of the package. And I've met Stan Hansen two different times, and I never got a picture with him. So next time, I'm getting a picture for sure. Off to the races. See you later. Goodbye. Uh, I never got a picture with him, but super nice guy. Super nice guy. I've always wanted to read his book, too. I've read so many wrestling autobiographies over the years. I've never read his, though, and I would like to. So one of these days, I will. But there he is, looking good. Looking real good there. Pull him out here. Do we got tape on this one? Oh, yeah, we're taped in. We're taped in. Magnum wasn't taped in. They must have forgot the tape on that one. I don't know what happened there. I don't know what happened. See you later, tape. Goodbye. And we're going to pull the lariat out of the plastic prison. Love the plastic prison on these. Very, very nice. Very well done, I do think. And a lot of accessories with this Stan Hansen figure. Off to the races. See you later. Off to the side. A lot going on with this one. I do lose his hand here. Let me pop that hand in. These hands are very easily removable, I will say that. Put them off to the side. Let's break down these accessories. Very interesting stuff. So we do get the old 
uh, Texas horns, or is he just throwing up the Ronnie James Dio? He's just saying, I, I love heavy metal, I love Ronnie Dio. That could be, or it could be the old, ooh, you know, he did that all the time. Probably what that is, in all honesty. He does got his big old rope here. It is a real rope or real string, whatever you want to call it, so you can whip it around, all that kind of stuff. And he does come with a cowbell. It isn't an actual working cowbell, but of course he would love to carry that cowbell around, drill people with it, hit people with it, things like that. You could tie it onto the end if you want to, but there it is, so you get some of that. The cowbell got a little bit of size to it, I would say, and it's got a nice kind of brassy color. It's got some dings and dents. It's a cowbell that's been used out in the farm and in the ring. There you go, uh, but very, very nice. We haven't got a cowbell like this in quite some time. Looking good. He does got a little bit of an Indiana Jones hat here. This doesn't really scream cowboy hat to me. I don't know. Maybe that's just me. Maybe I'm just not familiar enough with my cowboy hats. Hopefully it fits. Oh, yeah. It goes on him very well. Very well, but it almost looks makes him look like a... I don't know. I don't know. Like an Irish... Like an Irish uh, officer or something like that. I, it doesn't. It doesn't scream cowboy to me. And maybe that's just me. I don't. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe. I don't know. You guys tell me. It, it's a. I don't know. It's enough of a cowboy hat. It's not super super cowboy hat. At least in my vision. Uh, but definitely a cool hat here. Brown. Got the black band around it. Definitely a hat at the end of the day. And then we get the same tag team title belt. Gotta get the most out of your molds. And guess what? It works because you needed it for him. Uh, so you got his tag team partnership here with Bruiser Brody represented in the tag title. Now we do remember that Ted DiBiase was supposed to be in Series 1. Obviously that didn't work out. They had to pull him. But it would have been nice to have that Ted DiBiase because we've got a million, million dollar mans. We never got one from his short but uh, memorable tag team with Stan the Lariat Hanson. That would have been a very cool Ted DiBiase figure to have. Just not in the cards, unfortunately. But old Stan Hansen is in the cards here. Looking really, really good. We're going to start with the head on Stan. He, Stan was one of those guys who never had a crazy hairdo, didn't need one. He just had one that you would see a guy, an auto mechanic have, or a guy at the car dealership, something like that. Just a guy that was tough, you wouldn't want to mess around with. That's what his haircut said. And his mustache said one to the next level as well. Had the tough guy mustache going on, like a young Don Fry. There you go, there you go. But looking good here in the head department. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if you could give me this head and say who this is. I don't know if I could tell you it's Stan Hansen right away. It does have a little bit of a Blackjack Wyndham look to it to me. Uh, Barry Wyndham's dad, of course, does have a little bit of that look, so I don't know, but does got the little butt in the chin, like I said, got a good mustache on him, the eyes are good, very uh, intimidating, very Dale Earnhardt-esque, he's like the intimidator, that's what he is right here, uh, but that does look pretty good there as far as the head goes. Uh, the rest of the body here, he's got the bigger upper torso, of course he was a big dude, he had that big barrel chest, those big arms for those big wild clotheslines he would give, and as we've seen with these Power Town figures, a little skinnier on the leg department and a little small in the hand department. I think the hands really need to be about one size bigger. Just a little bit bigger, and I think they would look really, really good here. He does got a knee, an elbow sleeve. This hand keeps popping off. I don't like that a whole lot. Yeah, this hand does pop up all the time. Oh, that's a very tight on that uh, hand joint there. And then every time you turn it, it just pops that hand off. So don't like that either. That is not staying on if you just move the hand, but... Uh, you play around with it. Once again, it depends. Not a lot of kids are going to have these figures in their fig fed. You're not going to give this to some six-year-old kid and say, hey, go ahead and play with Stan Hansen. You're going to buy him a basic to play with. Uh, these are more statue slash figures in a lot of ways here. But uh, those hands shouldn't pop off. But, yeah, you turn enough, they just do pop off on you uh, for Stan Hansen here. It's not the end of the world for sure. Uh, I talked about his hand. He had the uh, old Ryan James Dio hand. Once again, much like Bruiser Brody, no fisted hand. Really would like fists with these guys. At least one fist with every wrestler, especially guys like Brody and Hanson. Man, they let their fists do the talking more times than not. Need a fist instead of these two open hands here. I would have liked this wide open hand to have been a fist instead, uh, for example. That would have been nice. Just plain black uh, tights on him. Uh, that's kind of the way he was, his black trunks. He was just plain Jane, like a young Stone Cold Steve Austin, but way ahead of the curve. That's what he was here. But we got his chaps going on there. You got the SH, of course, for Stan Hansen. You got a little uh, doilies on the side. You got the flare on the side in white and black. The black and white attack looking good. You got Stan Hansen on the vest once again. Got the uh, little poison. He's poison right there. That poison lariat. You got the skull on the side once again. Stone Cold stealing some Texas secrets here maybe. Who knows? Uh, but definitely looking good in the chaps. I don't always think of him in the chaps. I'm trying to think because when I usually think of Stan Hansen, I go back to WCW against Lex Luger. Of course, I remember the bell. I remember the chaw. I remember the hat. I don't remember him always wearing a vest and chaps, but I think he did from time to time. 
but definitely very, very cool. Articulation on Stan Hansen, arms very tight going all the way around. You do get a bicep cut on him. Single jointed elbows, very tight once again, pinned in the hands of course, or pinned in the elbows of course, as we do know with these figures. Does got the hula hoop at the top, not really any articulation there though, there's really no articulation. He does got that waist articulation. He can do a little bit of splits here. Of course, I got to figure out how to get all these chaps off. They are in a, like a rubbery plastic around here, it seems to be. Uh, and then there is a strap at the top. It doesn't look like they're removable. You're going to have to take that offline, figure that out. It might be one of those things where you pop the boots out and then they'll slide off from there. I think that might be the case. He does have plain black boots as well, just keeping track at home. He does have black knee pads as well. Single jointed knees, very tight knees, but he does have them. You got the boot cut, of course, boots removable, ankles back, forth, side to side. No peg holes. No peg holes. Would love to see that in Series 2. We'll see if they can make that happen. But he does seem to stand okay on his own right there. But not a bad Stan Hansen, especially never having a real Stan Hansen before. It's great to have just some representation of the Madman from Border, Texas, finally in my collection here. Really would have liked to fist with him. That is one big glaring omission here. But really, at the end of the day, a good Stan Hansen figure from Powertown. Uh, would not be opposed to a repaint, a different version, anything like that. I love Stan Hansen, so I'd be cool with that if that did come. Of course, Bruiser Brody being his tag team partner. I think they said Brody's 6'8 and Stan is 6'4. How does that look? Does that look about right? Maybe Brody's a little tall. A little tall, but I always thought Brody was 6'6". Six six, and maybe it's a typo on the package. I could be incorrect at that point. But if he's supposed to really be 6'6", six six, and Stan's supposed to be 6'4", that might be a little bit closer. So uh, definitely cool to get these guys together. Definitely going to display these guys together in my collection. There's no doubt about it. And, of course, Magnum TA, we're going to put him right in there as well. So Magnum's supposed to be 6'1". He's 6'4". So to me, the scaling works okay. I don't have really too many problems with the scaling of this line. It's just when you get them to other figures like the Mattel Elites, that's where things kind of fall off to the side there. Is, uh, you got Magnum next to Stan. They're just way bigger figures. They are more in line with the Super 7 Ultimate or maybe the uh, Storm Collectibles, a little closer to that. But they're not really going to work with your Jazzwares and Mattel unless you don't care about true scaling. So it's up to you. Choose your own scaling adventure out there. But there's Stan Hansen, Power Town Series 1, another one in the book. we got more to come, so make sure you do stay tuned. Make sure you subscribe to this channel. Make sure you give it the old thumbs up. Leave me a comment down below of your favorite Stan Hansen memory, or at least if you're going to pick up this Stan Hansen figure, or do you have it on order, do you already have it in your uh, house, let me know in the comments down below. Of course, don't forget about the Patreon channel for early access to videos like this, bonus content, exclusive content, giveaways, Q&As, dog stuff, pizza stuff, you name it, there's a ton of content for you over on the old Patreon channel. And best of all, you do support the channel and all this content by being a member of the Patreon. You can also support the channel at ProWrestlingTees.com. Search Kyle Peterson. And don't forget social media. Sir Paul 64 on Twitter, Instagram, the underscore Kyle underscore Peterson. So for Stan Lariat Hansen, I'm Kyle. I'll see you guys all real soon.